she reported to the church board. So mm. they will have been holding meeting and looking for a way to make him go for a DNA test. Mm. According to his barrister, he has always refused that he doesn't want to go for a DNA test. They said, no. The barrister said, he told him, come. If these children are saying you got them pregnant and you are saying you did not, prove yourself wrong. Mm. And the only way you can do that is to get a DNA test. Straight on. So they had to force him, force him. This thing I'm telling you started all in June. It took them July, August, September, October, November to be able to force this man to go for a DNA test. Which year? Five months. Last year, 2022. So that was it. And then um, three months into the pregnancy, someone else actually got pregnant for him. And there he came and started telling, telling me that someone told him that I was having an affair with my ex-boyfriend when I was in his house so that the pregnancy is not his own, that he is not responsible, so that I should not come and give him another man's child and expect him to take care of the baby. Mm. I was like, where is that information coming from? I was not in any relationship before I came to your house. The person I was with at that time, we had broken up. When I came to your house, I was not with anybody. So where is that kind of information coming from? He said he got it from a reliable source. I said, anyway, that is not my problem because I know it is a lie. He said, okay, I should bear it at the back of my mind that he will not be taking care of me and the pregnancy again until I deliver. And then we go for a DNA test. Beautiful. I said, thank God there is even a DNA test. At least you will get to know the truth. And I actually thought it was a joke. He refused taking responsibility for the pregnancy. You call him, he won't answer you. You send him a message, he will not respond. Once in two months, he will send you 50,000. You can stay and say, probably by the time I have gotten angry and talk and talk and talk and talk and cry, maybe sometimes after getting angry and begging him, I will now stop getting angry, I will start begging him. That's when he will send money. So at that point, it was as if I was now forcing him to take responsibility. He kept telling me he wasn't, he doesn't want to invest in another man's child. And at that point, after a while, I got into depression. So many things started happening throughout the pregnancy. I was always alone. I couldn't tell anybody. Every single time I told him, if you continue with this, I'll be forced to tell somebody about it. He said, eh. If you tell anybody about this thing, he will threaten me. You don't know you're dealing with something that will consume you and your whole family. He will do this. He will do that. So fast forward to 2020, March, I had the child. 21st March. How old is this child now? It's currently three years and three months. Okay. So fast forward to 2020, March 21st, I had the baby. He requested for a picture. I sent him a picture and he was like, oh, um, okay, I'm sending you 100,000 now. Go and buy AC. Put inside the room where the baby will be sleeping. I don't want him to sweat till I do DNA test. Do you have, do you still have the account number he's using to send this money? I have, yes, it's still the same account on the 21st of March 2020 in the evening. So if we call for a statement of account, we are going to see this. this yes, you will see it 100,000 on 21st of March. Okay. Yes. So, no, the same phone. It's not the same phone. Is this the same phone you're using right now? No, it's not the same phone I'm using right now. Okay. Yes. So after that day, I still did not answer him. I went to the house. Even after the baby was born, he was actually his very carbon copy. He still refused to take responsibility. That being said, this thing kept happening, kept happening. 2021, he sent Chinedu outside. He kept telling me he would do a DNA test. He would do a DNA test. The baby was one year, no DNA test. Two years, no DNA test. He kept promising, nothing came up. We were still beating around the bush. Today, I would, at some point, I told him, you have to do this DNA test. If not, I will tell people about it. He said nobody can force him to do a DNA test. That he can only do it when his spirit tells him to do it. That nobody can force him to do a DNA test. So at that point, I knew probably he needed more people to talk to him. Now, the DPO yes. that, that handled this case in Alu police station, I went to this DPO. I complained to him. So he's aware. The DPO confronted, yes, he's aware. Okay. The DPO confronted him. 
he accepted that the child is his own, but that his problem is that I am asking him to marry me. I said, marry you, kid. Marry who? Me. That have everybody you ever said so? Sorry, sir. Have you ever said he should marry you? Never, ever. I have never. Why will I tell him to marry me when everybody already knows I was married as of that time? Right, right, right. right. Yes. That's, and the DPO said he told him that, but the only thing I said is that I want him to take responsibility. If he's doubting paternity, he should go for a DNA test. That he doesn't yes. think it will take him anything to do this thing. So why is he making it an issue? He kept saying, okay, he will do it, he will do it. The DPO now asked him, I would like to bring this girl to your house and I'll come with her. Let her use her mouth and tell you what her problem is. Me and the DPO went to his house. You and the house? Yes, we went to his house. We got to his house, we got to his parlor, and we were in a meeting. If I talk, if I want to talk, what has been happening? He will start telling me I am being ungrateful, that I should see those students he sent to Turkey, he sent to Cyprus, he did this, he do this one. I said, that is not why we are here. That is not why we are here. I'm talking about your child and you're talking about people you sent outside. How does these two issues relate? You see, you see? You see why I'm saying she's ungrateful? You see why I'm saying she's ungrateful? So we couldn't understand. At some point, he was talking. I talked back at him, and the DPO was like, don't talk back at him. Allow him to talk. So I kept quiet. He kept saying I was ungrateful. I was this. This is the reason why he doesn't. He doesn't want to take care of the boy. He doesn't want to do this. After all, I'm married. Now, why can't I just let my husband take responsibility? I said, who does that? Someone else. Father, the child, and someone else. As at this time, my husband was already in Dubai. Oh, okay. And was still not aware of the truth. Hmm. So, the DPO now, I now told him, what you're talking about is not why we are here. The DPO now said, this girl wants to start a business so she can move on with her life. Exactly. You have, maybe you fix some amount of money for the boy's upkeep. Give her money to start business so that she can go and live her life. You now say, eh, so that what kind of business do I want? I said, I would love to set up a unisex salon, both male and female. He said, okay, um, I should make a list and go and give the welfare department. The DPO say, how does welfare come into this matter? <laughs> this is you and her. Whatever you want to do, keep it between you and her. Right. Welfare coming inside tomorrow, sir, you will say she went to report you. So keep it between you and her. He said, okay, in that case, unisex alone, how much is it? 500,000. I said, 500,000 for a unisex alone. Is it for the equipment? Is it for the shop or which one? He said, please, 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 he cannot do more than that. He cannot do, in fact, he has visitors. Before we know it, he called his um, PA to call the other visitors that were waiting for him. And we were discharged like that. And we left. We left his house. The DPO said he would get to the end of that matter. He kept calling him. At some point, he said, if I cannot take 500,000, he will give 800. I said, I am not taking. I am telling you to set up a standard business for me. So I can focus on my life and forget about this whole child or no child if right. tomorrow i have need financial need for this child and you're not available i can as well from the business take exactly. care of the child without having to call you exactly. i am tired it's been three years i just want to move on and live my life he will just be looking at me that he i don't know what i'm talking about so the dpo kept pressurizing him you know said Did it? so at some point i told the dpo sir i will take this thing to public oh, this was last year mm. i told him sir i will take this thing to last public year Last year, January. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, viewers. We're not seeing her face very well because it's already late. She's okay. in the studio while I'm in the stage. Go ahead. Because of so I told him, sir, I will take this thing to the media because I am tired of trying to talk to this man all by myself. He did not say anything. He was just like, when he heard media, he was scared. He now said, eh, okay, tell her. Eh, eh, I'll give her one million. The DPO said, it is still too small. Exactly. So we kept talking and talking and talking. At the end of the day, DPO said, um, okay, if you can just make it two million, let us see what she can do out of the money. He said, okay, two million, two million. Outside that two million era, nothing again. If he's giving me the two million era, I should be paying the baby school fees from there. I should be feeding the child from there. In fact, I should take the child, take care of the child from the two million. The DPO says, sir, what do you mean? Two million era to take care of a child and start up a so standard the, business. The DPO is, is interceding be, between yes. The, the, yes. Okay. yes. The DPO was always calling him and talking to him. He was saying, in fact, that that is what he can give me last. I should go and take care of the child with the money. I said, if you're giving me 200, 2 million era to set up a standard unisex saloon, 
at the same time, pay the child school fees, feed him from there. I myself, I have needs. So will, I, will I still be doing that from the money? And at the end of the year, I will still be paying the shop rent. He said, okay, in that case, he will be paying the shop rent. In that case, he will be paying the shop rent. The DPO can testify to this. To some point, the truth is that I wanted to walk away. I wanted to go and live my life because the drama was too much. No. I was in, in the middle. Everything was always happening. If you, Sometimes I can send him a message. He will read it and finish. He will not answer you. You keep repeating the same message for three, four days before he will say anything. This two million naira did not come at once. No. The, yes, the two million naira came two times, three months apart. It did not come directly to my account. It went through the DPO's account. Mm. So he can testify to this. Okay. The shop was rented in February. Which year? Yes, March, April was when he brought the first one million. Which year? Meanwhile, 20, was it last year? Yes, last year, 2022. 2022. The shop was rented in February. March, April was when he brought the first one million. Now, two months has gone from the shop. The first one million, I used it in buying equipment and other things. It was still wasn't enough. I put it up in the shop. And then I reached out to him. I've used the one million and I've gotten some of the things. Please, the remaining one million. He said, okay, hold on, I'll give you. The first one million came in April. May, June was when the second one million era came. The DPO can testify to this. Now, this same June was when his wife came back. After he sent the one million era, I bought a few things I could buy, sports hairs. Now, this money was also for the baby's upkeep, his school fees. So there's no way I will carry all of them and put in the business. Right. So about 1.5 went into the shop. I kept 500,000. We had things we needed in the house, daily upkeep, school fees. I have my younger sister living with me and she's going to school. Right. I pay her transport every day. So now, his wife came back that same June and his wife heard about the whole thing. I don't know who she heard it from. She made an investigation. They gave her my contact and she called me. The wife called, she called me. Yes, she called me and started asking me things that she has already known the truth, but that she wants to hear the truth from me and what she expects me to tell her the truth. What about the wife? Uh, Nketinyere. Nketinyere who? Yes, Nketinyere Chibuzo. Okay. She called me and said that she has already known everything, but that she wants me to tell her the truth because she has already prayed to God and that she has already told herself that she has heard all of us that are pregnant for her husband. We did this, we did that. So any of us that choose to tell her the truth, she will forgive the person. But that anybody will lie to her, anybody that will lie to her or anything, that the person will have God to contend with. Mm. The truth is that Apostle was not protecting me. He wasn't protecting my child. He did not care. Mm. So I had no reason hiding what has been happening. Right. I told his wife the truth. I told her everything. Right. She now said that, according to what she has been hearing, that um, she heard my child resemble her husband very well. I said, I wouldn't know. She now said, okay, can she call me on a video call to see the baby? She had asked for my child's picture. I said, I'm sorry, I can't send his picture to you. Video. He said, okay, can she call me on a video call to see him? I said, fine. She called me on WhatsApp, video call. She did? Yes, yeah, she did call me. Last year? Yes, last year, July. Yes, June, July. She saw my child. While she was on this video call, she saw my child. She was taking screenshots. How after do you know? the call. Now, after the call, because she has been asking her husband, and he has been lying that he doesn't have any child with me. That the only person he has a child with is with Joy. That he doesn't have a child with me. So... No, I believe she actually took those screenshots to prove to her husband that she talked to me. Yes. And that this is the child you have been denied. So she took screenshots and then went ahead to send the screenshot to her husband. I oh, talked yeah. to Lovett, this one, that one. It was on a Sunday night. Now, before this day, I have not been talking to Apostle for like two, three weeks. I have not sent him a message. He has not sent me a message. So I was surprised. It was around this time, eight o'clock, like this. For the, uh, after the morning, the wife called me in the morning, the evening of that same Sunday, he sent me a message. And the message read, I have received your message. Expect mine. That was the message he sent to me. Mm -hmm. 
That was it. And then I was scared. Anybody in my shoe would be scared. Right. 